This is a question um, regarding Beethoven Fifth Concerto, first movement, measure 187. And this is from the question, clearly, this is somebody who's uh, taking lessons from one of our teachers. Um, so the question, uh, first of all, fingering. I use, and the person is asking me if using two, four, three, five, two, four, and two, four again is the right, the best fingering, and my answer is yes. Uh, the addition shows uh, one, five, uh, which is okay as well. It, it creates a little bit more, a little bit more motion, a little bit more adjustment. And the reason I take, I like the three five better is because it is so close. The fingers are very close to each other. I would say that um, what one needs here is what I would call a little bit more technique, the technical knowledge. That do, there's a chance that if you're not sure how to do double thirds, the one five will may work better. But if you have, you know, the always first the rotational element, the double rotation, preparatory motion from the right to play to the left, from the right to the left. Now that becomes, as always, very small, and the question asks, is there also a walking hand and arm? My answer is, there's always a walking hand and arm. That means that when we rotate, the rotation brings the forearm right over the note and gives it a little bit of the weight of the support to put the key down and that creates a possibility also for moving across without stretching that when we rotate the forearm is always adjusting in the amount necessary not to twist not to stretch so there's always a walking hand and arm when we talk about rotation we don't always say rotation, walking hand and arm, but it really is rotation, walking hand and arm. So when you put two keys down and the arm is behind you, that's already a basic element of the, the uh, walking hand and arm. And when you go to the three, five, it's very close, but there's a slight shift of the forearm. It's no longer here, it's here. What the rotation does so beautifully with the walking hand and arm, it gets you there at great speed and great security and, uh, and precision and the least amount of movement so when we feel we hear we hear we hear we hear it doesn't maybe doesn't show but the feeling is we're equally solid on each one of the thirds so there is walking hand and arm there's a little bit of a shape coming from here this is already the start of a little bit of an undershape so if we go from here there's a little bit of an undershape between the 2-4 to the 3-5 and then those three thirds are in over shape and you can see a little bit of the forward also in other words the elements of in and out are all, they all work here in a very small way that forward is part of what I call the, the, the least amount of in we don't have to change key spot but the arm is moving forward to feel really it feels like it has arrived when it does that, but it also gets a little bit, it's forward, but the element of getting a little bit higher is already part of shaping. Shaping is adjusting to different finger lengths, changes of directions, black and white keys, is those movements that we often call circles. The very controlled, uh, I would say, kind of circles, and they have to be very precise. Where is it an overshape, is it an undershape? What's, what's involved? So you see a little under, over, so that's the question here. I thought that it might be interesting to show uh, another example of uh, the double thirds since it's, uh, it's an issue that comes up a lot. One of the nice things about learning to do something is that it, it becomes an non-issue, uh, no matter where it shows up. So in the Debussy Prelude, La Puerta del Vino, in uh, measure 71, he, uh, uh, it always comes up as a question, and it's, it's the same technique. First, it's a down, double rotation, which is particularly important as we go up, because when we go up, we tend to, you know, the arm tends to 
rotate to the right, but then it doesn't work, you know, it, it, it uh, doesn't play together and you feel, uh, you know, you feel um, off kilt, you're not, you're not balanced right, there's no control, but when you have, uh, again, the walking hand and arm is working there, there is a little in and out, I'm coming a little bit together, second part of the rotation, moves me a little bit out, a little bit lower, the fact that uh, the long notes and short, note, short notes doesn't change anything in terms of the rotation, in and out, shaping, it's the same, it just comes a little bit later, so it's an undershape to an overshape. The last note of one shape is the first note of the next sh shape, so we say this is an undershape, it ends up a little bit, comes a little bit down here, a little bit, and starts a forward, which is overshape so they share the G and the B uh, natural as you know like as a, a transition it ends one shape and starts another shape so so this is one thing and two measures later in 73 that always, always comes up as a question so what I do first of all the fingering uh, I do is one three two four three five Two, four, one, three, one, two, and I put the pedal down, I give it a sound, so that's one of the important things to know, again, when we can hang on and when we can't, and make sure that we're getting the musical result, uh, it's not just getting off, it's getting off with sound, so that it can connect uh, to the next sound that comes up. So again, starting here, ta -da, ta -da, can go to one, two here, the second time, ta and start here, can connect it to here. Ta -da, ta -da. So I'm connected, except everything connects here, except when I go from the one, three to the one, two. The one has to come up to get me to the two, to, to get me to the E, from the F to the E. And it's again, it's an undershape going to here, and an overshape coming back down, and tiny out, a little bit, very little bit on the two four toward the body. I'm not coming out because the next note is going to be a D flat. I have to stay inside, whereas here I didn't have to be inside a little bit. The third finger, if you can see, it's a little bit between those, between the. Um, these two fingers because in order not to be out and then have to move in and it, it creates a problem you have to be here and I release the third finger so, so it's a little bit inside here because the fourth finger which is shorter than the third has to be on the black key so the third finger in order not to curl has to be a little bit in front of it but here, I'm already set up for the fact, and that's an important thing to keep in mind, that the short finger, the fifth finger, is playing in the blacky area. So the other fingers have to be in front of them. So I thought that that might be also an interesting example uh, to show.